Hi, Spice Wood Kiddos, it's Miss Rayborn here. So today, we get to work on drawing our sarcophagus. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been learning about Egyptian artifacts and sarcophagus and all the different parts and how to draw a name and hieroglyphics and things like that. So we're gonna start today a drawing that you get to paint next week. So I have a blank white piece of paper here. Uh, hopefully you still have one left over. You should, I think, from the papers that you picked up at the beginning of school. If you don't, Miss Rayborn is actually just using a piece of copy paper right now because I wanted you to see that it'll work just on a plain old piece of printer paper. If that's all you have, no problem. You could even take a piece of paper out of your sketchbook if that's all you have. That would be just fine, okay? So I'm gonna start to draw the shape of my sarcophagus. Now a sarcophagus I'm gonna draw way up here at the top. It has a place for the headdress or the main part of the sarcophagus where the head is and we're gonna talk more about that. And then it comes out a little wider because it looks like shoulders like this. And then it comes down kind of to a, almost a, a, not a point, but it usually gets a little bit skinnier as it comes downwards, okay? So I kind of sketched out the shape lightly with my pencil because I wanted to be able to erase if I needed to, if I made a mistake or if I needed to double check how um, symmetrical something is. And again, it's never gonna be exactly the same I'm just doing my best. Like I just made this one a little bit bigger and then this one isn't quite the right size now. So I'm getting closer and closer, but that's why I'm using my pencil to start with, okay? Now at the top of my headdress up here, there would be a face and Miss Rayborn likes to draw that by making kind of a U shape for the shape of the head. And then my art teacher taught me when I was a little girl to make a line that goes across. And I'm gonna connect these two together because this is the top of the headdress that is on the sarcophagus that we looked at. And if you want to, you can make some patterns for your headdress. I'm gonna give my face a little neck and coming down from the sides, here's the part of the headdress that's coming out the other side of what we just looked at. So I could make my lines come downwards from the patterns that I was working on, if I want to. I don't have to, but if I want to. So when you draw in the face on your sarcophagus, here's another trick that Miss Rayborn learned from my art teacher when I was a little girl. If I can wanna draw the eyebrows, the nose, and an eyebrow all in one, and I can draw in some eyes and a mouth. I'm not getting super detailed because um, I'm gonna be adding a lot of detail with color and paint later. Now, as we moved down the sarcophagus, we looked at some examples of them uh, before we started on this. We saw that they had a lot of what kind of looks like necklaces happening, coming down from each side. And they make sort of a semi-circle kind of a shape. Now, if you want to, you can have patterns here you can use all different kinds of other Egyptian symbols if you want to. One of the things that I was thinking about including in one of my necklaces is a lotus pattern, which you practiced. It looks sort of like an upside down tulip going across and a lotus symbol is a symbol of rebirth in Egyptian culture. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. All right, so I've got my headdress drawn. That was the first thing that I had to include. The second thing that I have to include on my sarcophagus is something that shows me or tells me about Ma'at. And Ma'at is the Egyptian goddess who has the feathers and she makes the decision about whether you've lived a good life or not. That's her job. So she has beautiful feather wings. So I'm gonna draw some feather wings coming from each side, and they're just gonna kinda meet down here in the center, and these are gonna be Ma'at's wings. This is how I'm gonna show and express her power. 
And if I wanted to, I could kind of divide them out. I could draw individual little feathers and things like that if I want to, or I could just leave the shape of her feathery wings. It's up to you. I think I might stick with just the shape of her feathery wings to start with. I might add some more details in when I'm doing some painting. So we had to have our headdress, the face of our sarcophagus and our headdress. We had to have something that represents Ma'at. The other thing that we have to have is your name in hieroglyphics somewhere on your sarcophagus. So I'm gonna turn mine to the side and I'm gonna kind of divide a space where I can put my name in hieroglyphics and I'm making it up and down because we learned that when we draw in hieroglyphics, it doesn't go from side to side, it goes from top to bottom. And when we practiced our name in hieroglyphics, I learned that my name, the J sound of Jen, is made with the cobra. So I'm sketching in my cobra for the J sound. There's my cobra. The E sound in Jen is made by, it looks like a vulture. So here's his little beak and here's his head and here's his body. He's got a wing coming out here. And the vulture I learned had really kind of long kind of claws. So that was my eh sound in Jen is the vulture. So I've got him drawn in there. The n mm sound in Jen is represented by water. So I made myself a double zigzag line, which represents water, and filled it in because I wanted it to be nice and thick so that it would be easy for me to see. Now, the last thing that you have to have on your sarcophagus somewhere is another Egyptian symbol. So we had to have a headdress, we had to have a representation for Ma'at, and we had to have our name in hieroglyphics. Then you get to choose any other Egyptian symbol that you want to. You did some drawing of Egyptian symbols last week with Miss Deb, and so you've practiced a few. Now I have these sides over here. I could do something like just draw some patterns in these to fill this space. I could use my other if I want to, Egyptian symbols that I learned about when I did some drawing with Miss Deb, I think I'm gonna put some up here. So for now, I'm just drawing my zigzag lines, which is creating a pattern. When we looked at the examples of the sarcophagus, I don't know if you noticed, but they were very full of pattern. So I'm working on creating that pattern. I think I'm gonna put a scarab beetle on each side. Here's one side over here and the wings of my beetle. I made the eye of this one a little too dark. There we go. And then I think so that it's symmetrical, I'm gonna put one on this side too. Now you could decorate your the rest of your sarcophagus with any of the things that you learned about during your time of drawing symbols with um, Miss Deb. You could also work on adding any kinds of details or patterns that you've imagined for yourself, or you could write other things in hieroglyphics if you want to. The last step before you'd be ready to paint is you need to do a little bit of black outlining. You can use a black crayon, which I highly recommend because it works well with your paint. So I'm just gonna trace over the lines that I drew in pencil with my black crayon. So those of you who are at home will remember that Miss Rayborn loves to use crayons and oil pastels together or crayons and watercolors because the oil from the crayon or the oil pastel will push away from the water in the watercolors, which will allow you to make really beautiful detailed watercolor paintings without worrying about your colors mixing together. So I'm tracing the lines that I drew with pencil 
with my black crayon. Now, some of you might notice that there might be a few things that are just too small to trace with a black crayon. For example, maybe the parts of my face might be too small. If you feel like you want to use a colored pencil with one of those instead, you could if you wanted to. But Miss Rayborn really recommends a crayon because the waxiness is going to help you on our painting day. Okay, so I'm just tracing over my lines that I've already made so that I'll be ready to do some painting in our next week of art together. So I'll let you finish up tracing your lines. Anything you drew with pencil, you would want to draw and trace over with your crayon. And I'll let you get off to work I can't wait to see what your sarcophagus looks like. Next week, we're gonna do some painting and then we will turn them in and share so that we can see your beautiful creations that you've made. Here are my feathers going upwards like this. So go ahead and make sure that you trace all of those lines because we wanna get all of those details in there. I still have these to do. I need to finish up and my hieroglyphics, my name and hieroglyphics before I can be done. But I want you to get off to work. So get, get started on your hieroglyphics and drawing your sarcophagus. And next week, Miss Rayborn will have some directions for you on how to paint your sarcophagus. So bye for now.